welcome to this episode of Inside Brush Country Sports, brought to you by South Texas Orthopedics. I'm Chris Filateo, the sports editor here for the Pleasanton Express. The playoffs are upon us for a handful of area volleyball teams, along with the regional cross-country meet coming up this weekend. But first, let's talk football, and with only two weeks left in the regular season, now is the time for teams to make a postseason push. The Eagles and Indians both have positioned themselves in the top spots for the playoffs in their respected districts. Poteet and Charlotte still have a chance to make the playoffs, yet victories are a must at this point in the season. Last week, Pleasanton found itself trailing at halftime for only the second time this season. But the Eagles created offensive momentum in the second half to beat Sam Houston 52-36. The Eagles improved to 8-1 overall and are 2-1 in district play. In Jordanton, the Indians are rested after their bye last week. The Indians are 4-0 in district heading into this week's game against Luling, who is 4-1 in their district. In Poteet, the Aggies fell to Lavernia 70-0 on the road. The Aggies have their bye this week and look to prepare for their last game of the year next week against Sam Houston. In Charlotte, the Trojans lost their first half lead against La Prior last week. Charlotte lost 52-14 to the Bulldogs who dropped a 2-6 overall and 0-2 in district. In this episode, we will discuss the area volleyball teams who qualified for the playoffs and we will mention the cr- regional cross-country meet this week in San Antonio. I also sat down with Pleasanton stat man Ted DeVillis to talk about the Eagles' chances against Somerset this week. Let's begin with the four local volleyball teams who made the playoffs. Pleasanton, Jordanton, Charlotte, and McMullen County all finished the season on a positive note. The times, opponents, and locations for their playoff matches are still to be determined. In cross country, both Pleasanton varsity teams, along with both Jordanton squads, earned spots for the regional meet in San Antonio Saturday. The McMullen County Cowgirls also qualified for their meet after a strong performance last week. First, let's hear what Ted DeVillis had to say about the Eagles' chances this week. Then we will analyze Pleasanton's game against Somerset. I'm joining my friend Ted Villas today. How are you doing today, Ted? All right. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by today. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about the Pleasanton Eagles, them going into uh, the last week of the season at 8-1, and one, heading into Somerset, facing the Bulldogs. Uh, they're probably going to end up winning the district. Obviously, they still have to play with Lavernia next week. But how do you feel the, the Eagles would do this week? Yeah, I think that they would, they would do well, well this week. Um, they got to survive the, the the first quarter, mainly playing Somerset. Last year, they they really um, intimidated us at uh, the warm up, and 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 um, they did some thing early in the game that that got to it. We, we threw in the steps, and we did got to survive the first quarter, and I think we'll be all right. That's a good point you make right there, Ted. You know, surviving the first quarter and, and against Lavernia a couple of weeks ago, they they struggled in the first quarter, had a couple turnovers yeah. that were crucial, and in in turn, you know, lost the game for them. You know. The Eagles gear up for their season finale against District 4 Somerset Friday night. Pleasanton defeated Sam Houston 52-36 last week at home to improve to 8-1 overall and 2-1 in district play. The Eagles trailed the Hurricanes at halftime 20-18 but bounced back in the second half while scoring 32 points in the win. Somerset sits in second place, one spot ahead of the Eagles in the district standings. However, Pleasanton has its bye next week while the Bulldogs face district leader Lavernia. Last year, Somerset beat the Eagles 61-27 to in Pleasanton. Next, the Indians look to keep their winning streak intact as they gear up for Luling. Afterward, Jordanton head coach Wayne Johnson tells me how much playoff implication this game has. The Indians travel to Luling Friday night for their last road game of the season. Jordanton rested last week with its bye and looks to remain undefeated in their district competition with a 4-0 record. Two weeks ago, the Indians came from behind to prevail over Goliad 28 to 23 at home. Luling beat Jordanson last year 18 to 13. I'm here at Jordanson High School head coach Wayne Johnson. How are you doing today, coach? Good to see you. Good to see you definitely. Were you coming off your bye last week? Did you accomplish everything you like? Yeah, I thought I, I think we did. We had a few bumps and bruises, and I think we, for the most part, got those well. And we had an opportunity to really start working on Luling all last week. So, yeah, it, it was a good it was a good week for us. Well, talking about Luling, let's go in and talk about the Eagles. What's their offensive formation? Well, they really have two different complete offenses. They have a uh, where they're spread all over the field, and uh, you know they like throwing the ball and running the zone out of that, and then they line up in the eye and run right at you. So they basically have you know two different complete offensive sets. Wow! So they change it up. Yeah, they do. Now, what's their defensive formation? Defensively, they're in a four-three. Looks similar to ours. That um, uh, you know, so it's 
for us, you know, we can block our own stuff pretty well. So we, you know, it, in that sense, it's a, it's probably an advantage to us what they're running. Now, with you guys sitting in the lead of the district right now, this game has a lot of playoff implications for it. What are you going to tell the kids going into kickoff? Well, you know, our, our deal all along has been that we want to win the district championship. So, you know, to do that, I think this in the way the district is stacked up right now, you're going to have to win every game to win the championship. So that's our goal is to win it, win the championship. So we got to win this game. Now, what's going to be the keys to victory on Friday, Coach? Uh, you know, it, it, when you play a good team like them and they have a lot of speed and that kind of thing, we've got to tackle well. We've got to keep them in front of us. We can't let them get behind us. We've got to play well in special teams. We can't uh, give them because they do a good job of returning kicks and punts. So, you know, we've got to make sure we do a good job in those things and just and execute our offense. I think if we do that, we'll be good. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Good luck on Friday, Coach. Thanks. Now we glance at Potita as it rests during its bye this week. Then Aggie head coach Hank Willis talks about his goals for the bye. Poti mustered 86 total offensive yards in a 70-0 loss to Lavernia last week. The Aggies have their bye this week and look to get healthy before next week's game against Sam Houston. Poteet must defeat the Hurricanes to qualify for the playoffs. Here at Poteet High School with head coach Hank Willis. How are you doing today, coach? Doing good. Well, you know, uh, second to last week of the season, you have your bye week. This is kind of optimal time to uh, take advantage of it and go ahead and get some rest, get some kids healthy, and uh, to kind of evaluate what you're going to have next week come Sam Houston. How you will look to prepare for Sam Houston next week? Uh, first thing, we got to get healthy. You know, we've been banged up. We've been hurt the whole season. So we're taking this week, and we are just primarily focusing on getting healthy so we'll be full swing against um, Sam Houston in the following week. But, you know, we hadn't been healthy for the past, you know, five, six weeks. So we're, 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 we're struggling to get everybody well. But that's our main thing that we got to get, get done uh, is get everybody well, get everybody on the same page, and we'll be okay. Now you mentioned your main goal of becoming healthy this week. Now what's your second goal? <laughs> For us getting the playoffs, you know, uh, this last week, then really, this next week is like the playoffs. You know, we win, we keep playing. If not, it's, it's uh, turning our pads and let's get the round ball out. And I'm not surely not ready for that right now. <laughs> I don't blame you, Coach. Now, uh, going into this last week, what what were you going to do? Are you going to change up anything offensively as far as plays? Are you going to change up anything defensively? Are you going to kind of throw throw everything at them and just see what works? <laughs> we have no room. We're not going to hold anything back. You'll see some trick stuff from us. You'll see some things that you haven't seen before. And we're going to do everything we can to get into the playoffs. That's something that uh, hadn't been done at Poteet since 2008. And it's been a long time, so we're going to try to get in. Great. Thanks for your time, Coach. Finally, the Trojans host Benavides in their homecoming game this week. Charlotte head coach Jerry Dominguez was busy, but we will meet up for him the last game of the season next week. The Trojans host Benavides for their homecoming game Friday night. Charlotte lost its first half lead in a 52-14 defeat by La Prior last week. The Trojans allowed 30 second half points by La Prior in the loss. Charlotte dropped to 2-6 and six overall and 0-2 in district play. The Trojans beat Benavides last year 21-14. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest scores of your favorite area teams at PE1909. Join the conversation at hashtag MyBCSports. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Inside Brush Country Sports. I'd like to thank you for watching at home or wherever you may be. we also like to extend our gratitude to South Texas Orthopedics. Signing off, I'm Chris Filateo. Head out there and enjoy your Friday Night Lights.